Good morning, and welcome to Crenshaw Online. I am Pastor Royce Porter, Senior Pastor of Crenshaw United Methodist Church, and hey, I am so glad that you are here with us today. I have so been looking to preach this word on today. It is the final installment of the I Am series. So stay tuned, as the word of God shall be poured out to you today. You do not want to miss it. I said, do me like the Lord, well, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend, well, can't nobody do me like Jesus, I said, oh, can't nobody oh, do me like the Lord, oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Well, he healed my body, and then he told me to run on. I said, he healed my body, and told me to run on. I said, he healed my body, and then he told me to run on. His hands 
beginning and the end, beginning and the end. Oh, the God in three in one. Oh, oh, oh Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great. Grace and peace to you on this beautiful Sunday morning. I bring you greetings from Crenshaw United Methodist Church Online, and we are so glad that you have joined us for worship on today. We are continuing in our I Am series that we began on Resurrection Sunday. And today we conclude this series with the text taken from John chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 8. And there it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are then picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. 
This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Beloved, this is the word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be to God. Have you ever wondered about those who claim to be Christians, but whose lives show no evidence of it? They are in church on Sundays. They can quote scripture. They've even been baptized in the Holy Spirit and have received all the special anointing there is to have. They were there when the church was founded and they were confirmed under Reverend so and so. They have copies of their baptismal certificates and respond with a holy prayer face whenever you approach them. And yet with time when the religious exterior no longer holds up, when it begins to peel away, you surprisingly discover selfishness. You discover hatred you discover gossip and dissension and a host of other ugly realities. To use the words of our passage, these people are branches in the vine that do not bear fruit. You see, beloved, there are two interwoven themes in this text on today. The first is abiding in Christ and the second is bearing fruit. Both of these are closely related because it is only when we abide in Christ that we can truly then bear fruit. And if we do not bear fruit, then we will be dropped from the vine. So Jesus says, abide in me. And I in you, says the Messiah, the word abide occurs no less than six times, beloved, in this passage. And it suggests a number of things to us. Number one, it reaffirms that you and I are alive in Christ. The branch of a vine only has life as long as it is connected to the vine. If it separates from the vine, beloved, scripture says it will die. This is precisely what Jesus says. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Again, I say that you and I are alive today because of Christ Jesus. Jesus is the source of our life's blood. It is that which sustains Jesus and flows through him is the same life that sustains us and flows through our flesh. The same sap, beloved, that flows through the root of the vine flows through to the branches, the same proteins that nourish the vine, nourish the branches. Thus, apart from Christ, you and I can do nothing. The context of John chapter 15 is that it is a corporate invitation and not simply a conversation with an individual. He's talking to many people, not just one. And the culture that he was talking to was also what we would call a communal culture. It was not an individualistic one. Abiding in Jesus is, beloved, a corporate invitation for all of us to stay connected to Jesus, but it is also for us to stay connected to each other. The call to abide in Jesus cannot be separated from the call for us to live in oneness with those who are in the body of Christ. This requires each individual to commit to stay connected to Jesus as well as to the other branches that they may be integral to their connection with him. You see, the fire's flame represents God. Embers and coals represent Christian living in community and oneness together. If you remove a coal from the flame, it will burn out. 
It cannot survive without the flames consuming energy. Also, if you take the coal away from the other coals, it will become cold and it will burn out. But if you keep the coal in the fire and in a bed of hot coals, it will stay burning hot. Jesus wants us to remain in him and Jesus wants you and I to be connected with each other and with those who are passionate for him so that we can stay on fire for him. The apostle Paul writes that he is the source of your life through Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The word abide, beloved, means that we are not alone. One of the characteristics of a vine is that you cannot tell where one branch ends and another begins. The branches are intertwined. The branches are codependent upon each other. In fact, it's hard, beloved, to identify the root of a vine from its branches. The root flows into the branches, which in turn flows to one another. The whole lot together makes up the vine. As Christians, beloved, we are intertwined. Our lives are together. Whether we like it or not, we exist together. We are not alone. Christianity is not an individual sport. Beloved, I believe that we urgently need a paradigm shift. Instead of the emphasis on the individual, we need an emphasis on the church as a community. Somehow, beloved, we've got to move from this individualistic culture that is embedded with the filter of me and recover the biblical perspective of we. Beloved, so instead of asking and thinking, how are you doing? We ought to say instead, how are we doing? I am the vine. We are the branches. If we remain in him and if we stay, we will bear much fruit. Apart, we can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. But if we remain in him and his words remain in us, ask whatever we wish and it will be done for us. This is to my father's glory that you all bear much fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciples. We've got to take the individualistic approach and bring the we approach, for we are connected. This image of the vine challenges those who believe in this private Christianity. You cannot fulfill the word of God by yourself, beloved. Fellowship is an essential part of our Christian experience. Those who remain separated deprive their local church of the gifts that God has given them and cause the church and themselves to suffer. I know we are going through this tough time right now. We are home watching this service on Sunday morning. The question is, how much longer, Pastor? There are many that are itching at the opportunity to get back into the house of God. And beloved, I'm with you. But we 
have to stay out just a little longer. But even though we are apart, we are still connected. You've got to find those opportunities that are available to you at this particular church for us to stay connected. Uh, they can keep us at home. Uh, they can keep us out of the church, uh, but they cannot stop us from being connected. They cannot stop us from being together and praying for each other and loving each other and supporting each other. Beloved, we can accomplish this. And being in the church should not change that connectedness. Being outside the church shouldn't change that connectedness. You ought to feel your church family that is with you. This word abide suggests something that's long term, beloved. Everything is happening slowly on the vine. On the vine, there is no hurry. The temple on the vine is very relaxed. A vine glows, grows slowly. It branches mature little by little, bit by bit, day by day. It is in no hurry at all. Growth does not take place instantly. It happens over time. The verb for abide is in the present tense. It suggests a continuously slow process and Christians must keep on abiding. Christians must keep on living. Christians must keep on resting in Jesus. I may not be in the house of the Lord, but I'm going to keep on abiding in Christ Jesus. I may not be able to shout hallelujah in the presence of of my brothers and sisters, but I'm going to keep on living. I may not be able to run through the church, but I'm going to keep on resting in Jesus. Human nature doesn't like waiting for things. We like things right now. We want results instantly. We want success immediately. Our society moves very quickly. We leave undone till tomorrow what we can do today. We have fast foods. We have instant pudding. We have quick fixes. Sure, we have things quicker. But all these things that are quicker come with a cost, beloved. There's more heart disease than ever before. There are more strokes. There's more anxiety. There's more stress. There's more Valium and more Prozac. I don't know about you, but I know that this pandemic has put us at home but I feel good I feel good why because it's less stress it's less stress and we are just hanging on the vine growing slowly bit by bit day by day allowing God to speak to us and having the time to listen and listen and listen. And then when it's time to act, we move. Sadly, beloved, this whole idea of quick fixes has unfortunately found its way into the church. People turn the gospel into an experience that demands immediate gratification and immediate results. If the church cannot deliver them, then they simply find another church that can. But the truth is that you and I cannot cause spiritual growth to happen. A branch grows without effort. A branch can do nothing to speed up the process of growth. All the branch can do is feed itself and wait for growth to come. It cannot even provide the environment for growth. That's the work of God the Father. That's the vine keeper. That's the one who cares for the vineyard, the one who prunes it, the one who waters it, and the one who feeds it. We must not be concerned with growing. We must not be concerned with achieving. We must not be concerned with getting results. That's God's job. You've got to stay in your 
your lane. You've got to hang out on the vine. You've got to stay connected to Jesus Christ. And when God is ready for you to stretch out, when God is ready for you to grow, you will move to the next level, not because of what you've done, but because of God, the vine keeper, who's been working on you all day, the one who's been staying by you, praying with you, holding your hand and supporting you. When it's time for you to grow, God will grow you. Well, beloved, how do we do this? It's simple, y'all. You got to abide in Christ. Well, pastor, how do we abide in Christ? I want to hang out on the vine, pastor. I want to just slow everything down and be cool in the gang. How do I do this? You have to feed yourself with the words of Jesus. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. The words of Jesus, beloved, are life. Think about the words, I am the vine, you are the branches. When Jesus says, I am the vine, he is alluding to the wine of holy communion. In yet another scripture, Jesus says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. In other words, we abide in Christ by eating and drinking the flesh and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We commune with him. Have you ever wondered why we have to bear fruit? Fruit, beloved, what is it? Fruit is something that feeds other people. We grow fruit in Christ in order to feed a hungry and starving world. We can only feed others when we ourselves are being fed. Oh, I've come to tell you today uh, that we are living in a world right now that is hungry and starving for the word of God. Uh, they don't know what they need, uh, but we know what they need. Uh, and it is the word of God. Uh, and they are acting out uh, in ways that show that they are starving. But guess what? The church can only feed others when the church has been fed itself. I ask you this morning, uh, how is your branch? Uh, is it bearing fruit? Uh, are you righteous in your conduct? Uh, are you warm in your friendships? Uh, are you generous in your giving? Are you earnest in your service? Uh, are you humble in your attitude? Have you ever noticed, beloved? That the moment you pick a flower out, I don't care what flower it is, however beautiful it looks, as soon as you pick a flower, pluck it, it dies. Why? Because it has been separated from its source of life. And although it doesn't appear or look dead, it's dead. The seeds of death are automatically built into the breaking of fellowship. When you cut the flower off from the tree or the vine, fellowship is immediately broken between the flower and the vine. If you hand somebody that flower, you will have just handed them death. Now, it may be beautiful red death. It may be beautiful yellow death. It may even be beautiful pink death. Just give it a little time and that death will become extraordinarily evident as the petals drop from the flower. It will begin to change colors and it will get old and wither away. As well intentioned as you may have been in sharing that flower, death is actually what you gave them. Lack of fellowship of the flower with the vine results in death. 
Am I preaching this morning? A branch that's not separated from the vine will have no evidence of ungodly vulgarity, backbiting, criticism, harsh condemnations, or even malicious remarks. The branch that abides in the vine will show evidence of forgiveness, will show evidence of compassion, will show evidence of peace, will show evidence of gentleness, will show evidence of concern, will show evidence of submission, will show evidence of humility. Jesus is calling you this morning and Jesus is saying you've got to abide in me and he says if you abide in me and I in you ask what you will and it shall be done for you beloved I've got three envelopes I got a big one I got a smaller one, and then I've got one smaller one than the smaller one. And I've also got a slip of paper. The Bible says that we are in Christ and that Christ is in us. The smallest envelope, beloved, has Royce Porter written on it. The slip of paper has Jesus Christ written on it. The Bible says that when Royce Porter accepted Jesus Christ, that Christ came inside of Royce Porter. And so what I do is that I take the slip of paper and I place the slip of paper inside the envelope that says Royce Porter. So now, Jesus Christ is in Royce Porter. But Royce Porter is in Christ. The slip of paper Christ is in Royce Porter But when Royce Porter accepted Christ, Royce Porter came inside of Christ. I put the Royce Porter envelope inside the envelope that says Jesus Christ. I slip this envelope inside Jesus Christ. Now the Bible says that Christ is in God. And so I take the next envelope, and I put Jesus Christ that houses Royce Porter, that houses Jesus Christ in Royce Porter, and I put that into the envelope that says God. Now the Bible says that Christ is in God. So in order to now get to Royce Porter, You've got to go through God, and then you have to go through Christ. And after you've gone through God and gotten through Christ, then you get to Royce Porter. I go through God. I go through Jesus Christ. I get Royce Porter. However, Even when you think you've gone through God and gotten to Christ and gotten a hold of Royce Porter, when you open up Royce Porter, you will find that he is full of Jesus Christ. So I am in Christ and Christ is in me. Christ is in God. God is in Christ. So I am well covered by Jesus Christ 
and his heavenly father. Oh, I hope you hear me this morning. I pray that you are understanding that if we stay connected to the vine, that if we stay connected as a family, if we stay connected as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, it matters not what color your skin is. It matters not what you've gone through. It matters not what you look like. But if you stay connected to the vine, if you stay connected to Jesus, ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. Crenshaw, it is time that we practice a new church for Christ's sake. Pull all of your resources, connect them with your friends, embrace your tradition, and invent some new things. Uh, invent a new tradition, create programs, and get connected with other people. Find ways, beloved, to share who Jesus Christ is in your life. Everybody who invented something did it because they went in another direction. You got to go into another direction. Stop doing the same things you've always done. Do something different. Try something new. Invent. Be creative. Use your God-given abilities. Don't let people tell you that you need to go this way and you need to go that way. You've got to disobey some to invent something new. Create from what you have, beloved. Make connections everywhere with all people. You see, beloved, that's what scares me with what's going on today. It's like they're segregating and separating us. And in Christ, we are one. I am a black man, but in Christ, I am one with all. I am the branch. Jesus is the vine. You are the branch. Jesus is the vine. We are the branch. Jesus is the vine. You are worthy. You are precious. You are God's beloved child. We are the branches and Jesus is the vine. We are worthy. We are precious. We are God's beloved children. We are connected. And at the end of the day, even if we don't agree with one another, we will hang out together. What matters is that we are fighting each other's battle. We live together. And along life, we will fix each other's paths. By the grace of God alone, we will try our best to fix each other's paths. When the world hurts and damages the best of us, you will never go by yourself alone for our role if we are connected to the vine we the branches are in this together there is not a brown branch there is not a white branch there is not a latino branch there is not an asian branch we are the branches and we will provide God's love to each other we will fight for a better world we will fight to rescue and bring aid to each other why because we are God's children and we are wonderfully and fearfully made by the hands of God we are created in the image of God God, we are the ones who have been waiting for God's grace. So together, together, together at the table, black folks, white folks, Asian folks, Latino folks, together we can fix what is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
we can fix it. Gracious God, we thank you for your holy word on today. And we pray, God, that you will hear our call this morning. We know, God, that you are calling us for such a time as this. So, God, use us right now. Bring us together. Unite us as brothers and sisters of Christ. For God, you are in me and I in you. You, Jesus Christ, are in God. So God, we ask that we will go where you have sent us and speak to those that we need to speak to to bring your kingdom today. In the name of Christ, amen. morning we invite you to make that decision for Jesus Christ on today we pray that the words and the scriptures have resonated in your spirit and there has been a shift in your life that you now at this moment realize that you are not in this by yourself there is something that moved in the midst of the message that reminded you that you are not by yourself and that God is ever with you and that God is connecting you with brothers and sisters who care about your well-being. I pray today that because Jesus Christ is standing at your door, he is continuing to knock, but Jesus Christ will not push that door open he is waiting for you to open up the door. And when you open up the door, Jesus Christ says that he will come and live in you. It is the same concept of Jesus Christ standing. And here you are. Jesus says, I want to be in you. But I will only come if you invite me in. And so today, I invite you to accept Jesus Christ to come into your life. And so no longer will you be by yourself, but Jesus Christ will be in you. And when you live in Jesus Christ, know that Jesus Christ lives in God the Father. And beloved, it is a beautiful thing that you are packaged in such a way that you are never alone. Make that decision today to say yes to Jesus Christ. Way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are.
Beloved, it is that opportunity that we have to give on this morning. Remember, it is more blessed to give than to receive. All that we have comes from God Almighty, and it is our privilege and our honor to give unto God. Beloved, we give this morning because God has given to us. And so this morning we have created opportunities and ways for you to give that make it convenient for each and every one of you. We invite you to take opportunity of those options that are available to you. You can continue to give by bringing uh, your offering to the church house um, Tuesday through Friday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, we will accept each and every donation that comes. We also invite you to be able to give online. You can go to our website page, uh, and there in the top right-hand corner, there is a blue dot that says give. We invite you to press that, and you can give. You also can give by texting on your phone. So please give that way. And then we also have Cash App that is available to each and every one of you. So let us give because God has given to us. I am so glad that you were able to join us on this week. Now I pray that your life was changed. I pray that decisions were made for Jesus Christ on today. That is the goal every Sunday, that lives will be changed for the better. So as you go out this week, I pray that you will go and share the word of God with someone, that someone's life will be changed because your life has been changed. Until next week, we will see you right here on the same channel, same time. Go out and spread Jesus Christ.